Hallelujah. Wow. I want us to look at the Bible. First of all, uh, in Second Peter chapter number three, Second Peter chapter number three. You found it? Or looking at verse eighteen. What does it say? Yeah, it says, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. But grow in grace. The word grow is taken from a Greek word oxano. It means to give increase. To give increase. It says to give increase to grace. That means increase in grace. All right? Increase in grace. We're talking about grace now. Increase in grace. You see, notice something. He didn't say that um, God, at this point, he didn't say that God would increase the grace, but he said to us to grow in grace. Now the Bible also says, and God will make all grace abound towards you. In other words, you've got something to do with it, and he's got something to do with it. He can make all grace abound towards you. But then he says for you to give increase to it. In other words, grow in it. In the grace that God has given to you. There's something that you have to do. Now, Speaking from the Bible, the word grace comes from a Greek word, which many of you know, charis. All right? Charis. And, um, you know, there's a general definition of grace that a lot of people are familiar with. You say, what is grace? They say, unmerited favor. But that is from the negative standpoint of the definition of grace. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just telling you that they're looking at it from the negative standpoint. Unmerited favor. I don't deserve it, but he gave it to me. He favored me. But that is a very limited definition of the word grace. Given to us from the Greek background, carries. Grace actually refers to the divine influence on the heart the divine influence on the heart reflected in life reflected on the outward expression in other words it is the it is the um, the the outworking of an inward influence it is the outworking of an inward influence the divine influence in your heart. Divine, that means it's got to do with deity. God. Hallelujah. So, the Lord impresses upon your heart through His Word and the Holy Ghost. And then, whatever is deposited by that influence is seen on the outside. It shows itself on the outside. It's revealed outside. 
then we can say like they said uh, they said they saw the grace of God on them the grace of God they saw the grace of God how can you see the grace of God you only see the outworking of the grace of God it's like saying we saw the wind blowing well you really don't see the wind you see the effects of the wind is that right when you see objects moving and the branches the leaves of a tree moving this way or that way you say oh it's a strong wind you see you can feel it uh, it's the effect really you don't see the wind so the grace of God on its own cannot be seen until you see what it produces hallelujah now when when the influence the divine influence works out within a man's spirit there are things that you see outwardly there are things that are revealed on the outside number one is acceptability sometimes I wish every Christian in the world would understand this message it would change so many things about their lives number one is acceptability grace I said is the divine influence in the heart that reveals itself on the outside you see the outworking of grace you see it in the man's life number one thing that you see is acceptability something about that man something about that woman that pulls you that attracts you now that doesn't mean everybody's gonna like you but every well-meaning person will you see you will have persecutors to be sure look at Jesus the Bible says little children came to him. little children he said come on people heard him gladly something about grace if this grace works within you you see it's a divine influence in your heart and it shows on the outside if it works within you you would observe one acceptability sometimes we have people who say they can understand um, they go for an interview they are disliked or they start a job after two weeks nobody wants to see them what you need is grace you need grace grace in your life now this grace we're talking about I want you to remember we're not talking at this point of unmerited favor God extending his grace toward me to receive me to accept me that's not what we're talking about here that's not what he's increasing he's given us all of that already and that's what St. Jesus down here all right and um, he died for us and brought us into salvation he already gave us that now we're talking about grace in your life grace working through you hallelujah acceptability something about you you might be the new kid on the block but everybody wants you something about you whether you're telling a story you're singing you're cleaning you're sweeping you're doing whatever it is 
if that thing follows you, it singles you out. It singles you out. They just don't know why they're attracted towards you. To give you this contract. You might be the least qualified of them all. Of all the applicants. If grace is working in your life, it looks like they want to give it to you. <laughs> you see, and that's very important. Doesn't matter what job, doesn't matter what it is. If, if that thing works in your life, that's it. That's what he's telling us to grow in. He says we can grow in it because you see some of us function in grace to different measures from other people. You know what? You can turn it on in your life. And another beautiful thing is if you use it and use more of it and use more of it, God can always give you more. You add more to it and then you use more of it and use it and use it then he adds to it glory to god grace 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 i said it produces in your life acceptability acceptability grace they just can't understand why Nature responds. Nature responds to you. With grace working in your life. And remember, he said to grow in it. So there are levels. Are you hearing this? There are levels. You know, some people start out, they start out a, 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 a trade. A business of some sort and nobody comes to their shop they can't understand why so they think that they need to cast out devils see if you're a Christian don't be negative in your thinking think positively these are trying to cast out devils looking for the demon that's troubling you why don't you increase the grace <laughs> Somebody said, I can't understand. I haven't gotten a promotion for several years. What are you waiting for? This is the thing that does it. This is what does it. I've been tremendously graced. I'm telling you, I've been tremendously graced. I can't, I don't know how to put it in words to anybody. You know, a lot of times you hear me say, my life is forward and upward. Right? Because of grace. The grace is abundant. And it just urges me on. He just, you know, it, it just takes me on. More and more grace more and more grace this thing works within me there's no demon hatched out of hell that knows how to stop it because it doesn't stop hallelujah and my responsibility is to grow in it take advantage of it you see Paul wrote a letter to Timothy he says stand strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Take advantage of it. That's what the word says. Take advantage of it. If I get into anything, it's got to grow. It's got to multiply. It's got to produce results. It's got to. It cannot fail. Why? Because I only get involved in something if the grace of God is going to be involved in it. You see that? 
So I get into it with the grace of God. Grace. I take advantage of that grace. Are you getting it? Say to somebody, grace. Grace produces acceptability. Say it again. One more time. See, the people who don't understand some of these kind of things, they mean well. They are honest. They are willing. They, they try to do something nice to other people. And they're always rewarded with hatred. You know, after all you've done, they don't like you. After all you've done, they pay you with evil. And then you feel frustrated. You don't know what you're going to do. Now, if I ever get repaid with evil by somebody that I've treated well, I never care. You know why? I only get greater. See, I never care. Because I, you know, there's a... Um, I told you something a few years ago. I, 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 would, I would say to you, say this, I may be here today, but come and see me tomorrow. See? Because if you give a little time, between now and the next time you see me, the next time you see me, you see, I keep going higher and higher and higher and higher. I just keep going high. Why? Grace. Just my grace. grace. That's what it is. That's what it is. Grace. See, the race is not to the swift. And the battle is not to the strong. It's when that man walks in at the opportune time. And that's what grace does for you. Grace locates you. Brings you in at just the right time. Just the right time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just the right time. Glory to God. Look at that scripture again. It says, but to grow what? In grace. Say, grow in grace. Hallelujah. Grace brings you what? Acceptability. Number two. It brings you Benefits, advantage. Grace gives you the advantage. Did you hear that? <laughs> the advantage. Oh, glory to God. The advantage. Grace gives you the advantage. The advantage. Back in the university, I remember telling my classmates, I said something to them, I said, I'm 10 years ahead of you. I, I didn't know then that it was more than 10 years, you see. <laughs> you know, at, at that time, that was what my faith could pick. So I said, I'm 10 years ahead of you. So what do you mean? I said, I'm 10 years ahead of you. But that's what I said back then. But that was grace. Because I said, all the things you're going to be struggling for in life, I already have them laid up. First year, that's my first year in school. Just a young kid, yeah. Well, that's what I said to him. That's what grace does for you. Grace gives you the advantage. The advantage. 
Now, except you're conscious of it, it will not work. Are you hearing me? See, just because it's in the Bible doesn't mean it's going to work. See? There are things that just don't work because they exist. Now, are you, are you listening to this? Just because it's in the Bible doesn't mean it's going to work. First, you've got to be conscious of it. You've got to recognize it. Say this to me, I got grace working for me. Working for me. And working in me. Grace, you see, grace, you see, um, beautifies your spirit. You see, because grace is the glory of God working in a man's spirit. Grace beautifies your spirit. It is the glory of God working in a man's spirit. And you know what? If that grace beautifies your spirit, it will show on the outside. It will show on the outside. You see the glory of God in your life. You know, that's where that song really came from. You know, when the, I can see in you the glory of the Lord. Yes, I love you with the love of the Lord. I can see in you the glory of the Lord. So, uh, in you, I can see in you the glory of the Lord. What part of you did I see that glory? In your intestines or... You see, so... They're trying to say something. The song is communicating a spiritual truth. So they're not talking about trying to look into your body. They're talking about the glory of God. But this is the beauty of the spirits. I can see in you the glory of the Lord. Yes, I love you with the love of the Lord. I can see in you. Can you see it in you? Can you see it in anybody else? You sure? You know, if you can't recognize the grace of God in somebody else, chances are you don't know it at all. And so you can't recognize it in your life. I know when I see the glory of God, the grace of God in somebody's life. I know. I know because that's where I walk. I know. I know. I know when I see it. I never work against it. I never work against it. You work against it, you are done for. See? It says anyone who falls on this stone shall be broken. I mean, whichever way you work against it, whichever way you're in trouble. You fall against it, you break. If it descends on you, it grinds you to power. He said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for you to kick against the pricks. He said, it is hard. What you're doing is terrible for you. And God wasn't angry. Jesus wasn't angry at him. He's the one kicking against Christ. And the Lord said, look, you fall against this stone, you get broken. I'm not even angry. If I get angry at you, you'll be ground to powder. Hallelujah. So grace gives you acceptability and grace gives you the advantage. The advantage. Somebody's trying to sell something. Two years you've been holding it, trying to sell it, nobody's buying it. And yet this thing is good, but nobody's buying it. Oh, what you need is grace. Grace. With grace? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Then favor. 
Grace brings you favor. Isn't that amazing? We're talking about favor and yet, you know, it's one of the definitions of grace itself. But brings you favor. And that is akin to the advantage that it gives to you. Favor. Favor. Who are you? What everybody else is looking for. God gives it to you. They call you. Others are queuing up waiting for it. Somebody is taking the telephone to ask for you from afar. Say with me, I got this thing working in me. They're always there. Applying, pleading, crying. Trying to get all the connections working. to God. Favor. It gives you favor. If you're working with somebody, it gives you favor with the boss. You just have favor with the boss. Not because you try to do anything. But this thing is working. Gives you favor with your seniors. Gives you favor with your juniors. He worked in Jesus. Barbara says he had favor with God and with man. Favor. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look around him and say, hey, get this thing working in you. Look around him. He said, I'm in. <laughs> oh my God. God. Hallelujah. You know, I'm trying to think, is there, is there somebody here? Favor. Favor. Good is turned towards you. You see that? It's turned towards you. And when you go wrong, forgiveness seems to be abundantly available. The other guy that doesn't have it will pay dearly for his errors. And his mistakes are not as grievous as yours. <laughs> then they say, I, I, I don't understand. This world is imbalance in society. Somebody said, favor is not fair. And it's true. Favor is not fair. Doesn't play fair. Favor doesn't play fair. <laughs> See, there are five of us qualified. Let me tell you something. <laughs> it's not everybody who you find that is rich that stole money to be rich. Are you listening to me? And not everybody who got that job paid somebody money to get it. It's not everybody. Some people walk in divine influence. Divine. Divine. Favor is working for me. I'm divinely favored. Favored of the Lord. I am the favored of the Lord. I'm favored big. Say it again. I'm favored big. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> let, let me let you into a divine secret. Do you know, as I'm sharing with you, ministering to you right now, 
favor is being increased. Grace is being increased in your life. That's what it is. Hallelujah. You see, it's one of those things that the Spirit of God called me to do. All right? Now, you look at these fingers. It was not our choice to make this a thumb. We were born that way. Right? It wasn't our choice to make this look like this, and this like this, and this like this. Right? They're not the same. They're born in different ways. And that's God's choice. Right? In the same way, He called some of us and gave us something to give. One of the things that the Spirit of God raised me with and anointed me with was not only to teach and preach but uniquely to while communicating knowledge to impart also what it talks about for example if I start talking about healing people start getting healed while I'm still talking about him. If I'm explaining faith, people don't just understand faith, which is beautiful. But while they're understanding faith, their faith grows. Faith is imparted. So why sharing on grace with you? <laughs> Hallelujah. So that's what happens. You see, I had to tell you, I had to tell you so that you'd be awake to it and receive it into your spirit. Receive it into your spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. All right, so we, we said grace brings acceptability and grace gives the advantage. Hallelujah. And now we said, grace also does what? Yeah. Brings you favor. 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 Never say things like, well, we don't know if we'll ever get to our turn. No, you are not ordinary. You are not like the others. You were chosen. Chosen for favor. chosen differently you start understanding that if I go to that place I'll get it if I go up there I'll get it because favor works in me favor works in me you know I have the mentality if I ever want anything I'll get it anything 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 I better not want it if I don't want it see because because if I do it's coming that's favor favor maybe you need to understand something about your heavenly father He wants the whole world to know how much He loves you. I want you to get that. It's so important. He wants the whole world to know that He loves you so much. He wants the whole world to know. That's what the Bible says. He likes to prove His love for you to the whole world. He wants every boast of you. Now you say, me? With all my stupidity, with all my mistakes, get this straight. He is the I am, and you are the in Him. You are in Him. You are in Him. He sees you covered in Christ. 
He sees the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, things not yet done. He sees what the word will make of you. So all he says is, yield to my word. Work in my word. That's all he's calling for. Hallelujah. Did you get the, the third one? All right, number four. Grace brings joy into your life. Joy. You know, a lot of people don't understand the power of joy. There are many people who never let joy work out through them. Now, but when, when grace... When grace functions in you, it will also reveal itself in joy. It's called joy unspeakable and full of glory. It means joy indescribable. Joy indescribable, unfathomable. They can't understand why that guy is so joyful. They don't know why. Your life is always up there, up, 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 up. It's because of what's on the inside. You know, a lot of people, you always have to ask them, what's the matter? You know, they're always looking sad. They're looking like, you know, the whole world has broken down. No, no. If the Spirit of God works within you, Inside will be joy unspeakable and full of glory. It will show on the outside. It will show. The people who have worry look. You can tell they're worried. They, and they don't mind telling you, I'm very worried. I'm very worried. In fact, I'm very worried about this. I'm very, very worried. You're very worried. No wonder your life is like this. And you see, what you're worried about controls your life. No, I don't get worried. Because the Word of God says, for me to worry not. He says, be anxious for nothing. Have no anxiety about anything. Anything. Have no anxiety. When news comes to you about something, be composed. Because before it ever came to you, your father knew. Your father knew. He didn't hear it when you heard it. You know, I got this, uh, uh, you know, the, the Word of God gives us uh, a way of thinking. All right? Now, my way of thinking about anything is that whatever happens already happened. You see it? In other words, God already saw it because He lives in eternity. He already knew everything about it and I just got to find out. So what? He's got the answer. So all I have to do is wait for the answer. How did he find the way out of it? How did he? How did he? Because he already knew about it and knew the answer before I was born. Don't you understand who he is? So if you trust him, you'd not be worried. You say, Lord, you already knew about this thing before I ever happened on the scene. So, how we get out of this? Lord, what's the way you produce for this thing? How, how did you solve it? Because the answer, oh, glory to God. You know, a few years ago, I told you something. I said that the answer to every problem comes with the problem. In other words, every problem comes with the seed of its own answer. No problem ever comes to you except it came with the answer. Did you catch that? The answer. 
The solution is there. It's in the problem. It came to you because you are the one that had the solution. Problems gravitate towards their solutions. Get that idea. They gravitate towards their solutions. And when a problem comes to you, it's because you are the one wielding the answer. Oh, my! Oh, I wish everybody could catch this thing. Why are you in that problem? Because God gave you the solution. You got it. You've got it. Your life has to be a testimony. The bigger the problem, the bigger the testimony. So instead of worrying and worrying about, I don't know how I'm going to, I don't know how I got into this mess. Ah, hey, stop, stop. Where is the answer? How? Okay, what is the answer? Then the Spirit says, look inside. Look inside. Because inside you, from the heart, are the issues of life. Out of your heart are the issues of life. Your, your spirit works like a fountain. From there, all the answers come out. The Bible says the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Search in the inward parts of the belly. The spirit of man. Your spirit is where the light of God is. Hallelujah. Did you catch that? Joy, joy. Grace brings joy. Grace brings joy. Joy. Did you know if you prayed in the Holy Ghost and took your mind away from all of those problems, before long, you'd be laughing in the spirit. Now, why does he bring that laughter to your spirit? Because that's, that's, the, that's the state of your spirits. And when you receive that laughter within your spirit, don't stop and then go back to what you used to be. Sad, unhappy, worried about all these things. You're worried about this and that. Your problems are many. I said, Lord, I have many problems. Many problems. I don't even know where to start from. Oh, see, confusion. Joy. The grace of God brings joy. Peter called it joy unspeakable. Joy indescribable. Unfathomable. He says joy unspeakable and full of glory. It is full of glory. It is full of glory. Joy. You are not spiritual just because you look serious. That's the point. I'm sure you're getting it now. But just because you're looking serious doesn't mean you're spiritual. And those who laugh, you think they are carnal. That's why they're laughing. No, have you ever seen me laughing like a fool? No. So it doesn't mean that when you laugh, something's wrong with you. No, but I believe in laughter. It says, you're unspeakable, full of glory. My laughter is full of glory. Are you listening to me? No, I laugh with a difference. Yeah. 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 Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. The next one. Liberality. You see, he brings liberality into your life. What I call it is giving and receiving. I'll explain that. Liberality. Meaning that grace working in your spirit causes you, it opens a channel. What we call a two-way channel. A giving and receiving channel. A giving and receiving inspiration. You see that? Grace working in you causes you to release. It, it's a grace. Giving is a grace. It's not everybody that works in it. You say, how can you give such? How can you give such amount to God? They won't even say God. They say, how can you give such amount to church? They, they see it as church. You know, canality. Say, how can you give such amount to church? But it's a grace. When that grace works in you, suddenly he opens up what you call giving and receiving, liberality. Now, <laughs> when he opens up that capacity to give and inspiration to give, it equally, because it never 
giving never comes without receiving. You see that? Once that release is made, he opens up your capacity to receive. You see that? Liberality. A two-way channel. Giving and receiving. You find your spirit, you, 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 just, you just love to give. It excites you to give. It excites you. It excites you. All the time you're thinking, who am I going to give this thing to? Glory to God. I want to give. I want to give. I want to give. Sometimes you're looking forward to going for service. Why? You have, you, you have a seed you want to plant. You know? You just want to give. You're looking forward to a service. Wait, what time is the service starting? You know? As if you didn't know. You're like, ah, when is the service started? You know? It's working in you. Because also God has produced within your spirit that capacity to receive. Giving is a grace. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Say thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you Lord Jesus. How many have I given you? One, two, three, four, five. I got six and seven. Number six. Pleasure. 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 Oh, glory to God. He says they shall spend their days in pleasure. How do I explain this? There are not many people who live a pleasurable life. Not many. You know, it, it, it's not like, um, it's not like, okay, let's go and jog. Why? Because you're trying to lose weight. I'm talking about pleasure. You're doing it because you love it. All right, and now you can find time for it. Not just because, you know, I need to work out. Not that one. He just liked to. And now you find that same pleasure, that feeling can come spiritually too. And then you find that as it works, you please God. Let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. God cares about you being happy. Did you know that? If you were playing a game, the Lord would not be upset with you. And some people don't understand that. They think God gets upset. They say, when did Jesus ever find himself on the football pitch? And everybody say, no time. Now, I'm not excusing those of you who have become fans of Manchester United. And you watch through the night, break night over that. Manchester! Man, you! No, no, that's not what I'm talking about. Here's the point. As you find yourself doing something pleasurable, the desire to please God is strong. You see that? Your life is actually a life for Him. And that's the most important thing. Your life is a life for Him. It's a life for Him. Even your study becomes pleasurable. You find you love, you love things around you. You love, you take pleasure in the things that God has made. See, the, uh, let me explain something to you about the relationship between you and the things that God made. There's a connection. Because you come from the same source. I can understand people who see something like this and step on it and destroy it. Very destructive. They see things in nature and destroy them. Very destructive. 
they don't take pleasure in the things of God. But read the Bible. He took pleasure in His creation. Grace gives you that pleasure. You take pleasure in the things of God. It's a kind feeling. A kind and happy feeling that accepts others and loves to give to them. See that? Hallelujah. When you're at home, are you pleased to be at home? No, tell me. Some people get home and once they're at home, they say, that's why I like to be in church. Once I come to this house, carry the atmosphere from here to the house. You get it? Take it because that's what we're talking about. Christ has filled you. Christ has come to live within you. Christ has given you grace. Take that grace into your home. Take it in there. Hallelujah. The last one is the word gift. Gift. Did you know that grace brings gifts into your life? The grace of God in you deposits an uncanny ability to do what others cannot do in your spirit. Grace brings you a gift. It might be a gift of singing, like we have some of our singers. That's what grace has done. Grace might give you the ability to fix things. Some people are so good in repairing anything. Anything. Some are so good in understanding certain things. Some areas. I mean, they love to read about those things. They enjoy reading about them. They, they seem to have an uncanny ability to function in that area. It's a gift. And you need to recognize it. Because if you fail to recognize it, it will weaken. And the power of God cannot be on it to use it to magnify you. Look into your life. You'll be amazed what has been deposited. Some are so good in fixing other people's hair. Once it's you, the person that you're working on, is, on her hair will just be sleeping. She will wake up with something beautiful and happy. Some other people, if you go to that salon, by the time, what is all this now? They look at their hair like this. Ah, this is not what I told you. This is not what I told you. Take the money. This is not what I told you. <laughs> They're unhappy. But you have those ones who are being called everywhere. There's something about their hands. The gift is there. Grace brings a gift. Look into your life. You will find at least one powerful gift given to you by grace. Grace has brought it. Grace has brought it. Locate it and build on it. You have some people, they're so, they're so gifted. Even if it's only 5,000 naira you give to them to begin a trade, they'll multiply it. Before long, they have 15,000. They just have a way. They sell. The trouble with such people is they don't know how to connect with God. Grace begets grace. In other words, grace reproduces more grace. But for more grace to come, you have to know what to do with the one that He has given you. And then you can grow in it. It says to grow in grace. Grow in grace. Why is it that as good as you are in selling, as good as you are, why are you still broke? Ask yourself a question. 
Anything anybody has given you to sell, you've been able to sell so easily. After all that, three months later, you are back to being broke. You are back to zero. Someone has to try and help you again. You will start again. And once you start selling, people start buying. You make profits. Then you are back again to zero. Something is wrong. How can you have such a gift that is wasting away? Stand up and let us pray. Well, shout hallelujah. I got grace working in me. Woo! Grace! It's working, it's working, it's working, it's working! It makes me acceptable. It gives me the advantage. Can you shout amen, somebody? Hallelujah! Grace! Working in me. Brings me favor! Joy! Hallelujah! I got it working. Working, 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 working in me. It's working in my life. Grace. Lifting me above the ordinary. I'm functioning at a high level. Grace is working in me. High grace. Speak in other tongues. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Iba so taka bashata. So ramashandala bari galabasete. Rubra ke so chala darashi.